All right. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I have a real treat for you today. I have on from Plant Based on a Budget, Tony Akamoto. She has a brand new book called Plant Based on a Budget, Quick and Easy. She's going to tell us all about the book. She's going to make a wonderful recipe from it called Southwestern Lettuce Wraps, and she lives near me. Who knew? Please welcome Tony to the show. It's so nice to meet somebody local. I think you're like the first one. Chef AJ, thank you so much. I admire you very, very much. And I'm grateful to be here with you today talking about my new cookbook, Plant Based on a Budget, Quick and Easy. Well, you know, Tony, this is a great book. I can already tell you because it it you you address the two biggest problems that people say they have when they're trying to eat plant-based, vegan, or healthy. They don't have time and they don't have money. So obviously you have addressed both of those. Yes. And I addressed them from a very firsthand experience. I lived for so long under the poverty line while being plant-based, while not having a lot of time to cook everything from scratch, make my own bread, make my own pizza dough, make everything from scratch. So I, I was doing it out of necessity. I've learned from my years of experience, both running plant-based on a budget for 11 years, but also being on a budget myself for so long, how to navigate the grocery store and how to stock your pantry and then how to stay disciplined in your kitchen and at the grocery store so you're not making impulsive purchases. Right. And, and, and is it true, Tony, don't shop when hungry? I think it's true. It's true oh for me. Oh my gosh, that is so true. I am very much not myself when I'm hungry. I make bad choices. I'm hangry. Everyone knows, bring snacks for me when we're on a road trip or we're hanging out together all day because everyone will be happier. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for people like trying to lose weight or that's the worst time to go to a grocery store is when you're starving. I, I, there are a lot of, there are a lot of tactics at the grocery store has put into place to get you to buy things that you don't need or want or that are not healthy for you, that are not within your budget. And we can talk more about that, but it is designed to get you to spend impulsively. So you have to stay the course, you have to make your grocery shopping list and stay disciplined when you're there so that you can stick to your goals. Absolutely. Yeah, they do things like they always put it by the register, don't they? Yes, not only at the register, but right when you walk in, there's usually an aisle that you'll go down or big signs, sale signs, things at the end caps of aisles that make it seem like you're getting a really great deal on something. But often that's paid placement and you'll have to go to the aisle, even if you're getting something like canned beans. Likely the cheapest canned beans are going to be in the beans section and not at eye level. You're going to want to look for the price per ounce all the way around, sometimes way down there. And it's usually the store brand. Yep. Oh, my God. It's so true. And, you know, they they pay for that, like you say. The manufacturers pay for placement. And so the healthy stuff is way up high and way down low, so you don't even see it. Exactly. And that's why you have to pay attention and you have to come prepared. You have to have eaten your snack or your lunch and uh, come ready to shop and eat healthy and save money. Absolutely. So what are you going to make from the book today? And if you get a chance, maybe show us the book a little, open up a few pages, show us some of the photos. Uh, so this is the cover. It has a delicious bowl of rice and beans and different vegetables. I've got some tahitas there with some tofu and some roasted corn and a beautiful fanned out avocado. Um, I really love avocados. My husband actually proposed to me at the farmer's market in an avocado. He hollowed out the pit and put my ring in there and proposed to me as, it, as though it were a ring box, which is really clever. And... I was surprised and impressed. That is very, that, what a cool, what, that is very romantic. Good thing, it, you know, it wasn't like a cookie or something. You just ate it, you know? <laughs> yes, I actually, I've seen um, on television shows that people drop it in a milkshake or drop it in your wine glass, but you can drink that. 
Okay, yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. this is what I'm making today. I am making these Southwest lettuce wraps and it's very quick and easy as the name of my book suggests it would, would be. I used to have a very long commute. Actually, Chef AJ, do you know where Grass Valley is? Yes, it's far. Okay, so I used to work in Grass Valley and live in South Sacramento, and it's about an hour and a half each way. I was working at an at an animal um, sanctuary, farm animal sanctuary, and it was such a long day. Then I would add my commute, and then I would know that if I didn't have a plan in place by the time I got home, I would make an impulsive decision. I would eat something that I did not think was good for my wallet or my body. And that is how I got started on having plans that are easy, that don't require a lot of attention beforehand, like this meal right here. It's calling on pantry staples, like a can of beans. This can of beans right here was $1.29. It has no salt added. And I rinsed them already. It's the store brand, uh, nothing special. And uh, same with the corn. I got no salt added. I rinsed them off and uh, easy peasy. So we're going to start with sauteing our vegetables. And here I've got a red bell pepper. You can use any bell pepper. I've got a red onion. You can use any onion. I also have some garlic right here. You can use um, jarred garlic if that's your jam, but I like to use fresh garlic. Uh, it changes. I was in a phase where I did jarred garlic for a long time because I was all about saving time, but right now I'm in a, in a fresh garlic phase and using my um, garlic press. I don't have that with me right now, but usually I love my garlic press. And here is a bowl of water and you can use um, vegetable broth if you wanted to uh, seep your vegetables in vegetable broth or a bouillon that has, um, I forget the name of the one that I like that uh, is oil free. Do you know the name of the brand? Um, well, um, is it the one from Rip Esselstyn, uh, uh, Plant Strong? Um, I don't remember, but there are there are some options. I'm just using water today. So I've got a little bowl of water. And the way I like to do it is I keep about a cup of water with me, depending on how hot this, the, the pan is going to be, because it's going to evaporate as soon as I pour it. So I start in with just a little bit, and I'm going to dice my vegetables. Again, this is a very versatile recipe. You can add in um, not only different colors of the produce that I'm mentioning, but you can also add in things like zucchini. You can do mushrooms if you like mushrooms. I am one of those really crazy vegans who does not like mushrooms. I, don't I know. Like either. You don't? Okay. Not really. The only way I've learned to like them is from the restaurant we were talking about before we went on from uh, Faux Fresh, where he makes noodles out of them. And I think I'm eating noodles, but they're actually mushrooms. Amazing. I, I don't know very many people who don't like mushrooms. There's and something weird about the texture. I mean, I don't mind them air fried. I really don't love them, but everybody says how good they are for you. It's all about the texture for me too. And I also want to point out one thing that I'm doing here. And I keep a compost bin right next to me. And this, it sounds so insignificant about the time it, it saves. But for a long time, I used to have my compost bin kind of far from me in the kitchen. And I would take one, take one pile and dump it in, take another pile and dump it in, like walking back and forth. And that time really adds up in the kitchen. So I'm, I'm thinking about efficiency now. I'm keeping my compost bin right next to me so that I don't have to waste those extra minutes walking back and forth. Okay, so I mean, the beans you said that were 120, I've seen beans even cheaper at times, you know? Yes, they have beans at um, Winco. I don't know. You have? Do you have Winco? Of course, I do. I love Winco. It's in I, it's in Roseville, where I live. I love Winco too. Uh, oh yeah, it's right off of the freeway uh, in on sixty five. I think. Uh, on, I think it's on Foothills, or I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still pretty new here, but yeah, I love Winco. 
I love Winco too. Their bulk bins are amazing. They have Bob's Red Mill in their bulk bins. And ooh, so, such a good deal. But um, gosh, what was I just saying? Why did I bring up Winco? Because uh, beans, beans. Oh yeah, Winco has beans there. You can get beans for like 65 cents. And, uh, and that's just a regular can of beans like this. Of course, you can also make your beans from scratch, which I have uh, in my cookbook. I have pressure cooker as well as um, slow cooker instructions and, and of course, stove top. But my favorite way to, to make them is on the pressure cooker because I can set it and forget it. I can go walk my dog. I'm not going to blow up my house or burn my stove or anything like that. And I have found a way that really makes me feel like I'm eating authentic Mexican uh, pinto beans, which are my personal favorite. And the way that I do that in the pressure cooker is I, okay, I submerge the dried beans in water for 25 minutes on a high and high pressure. Uh, I cook them for high pressure at 25 minutes. Then I release the steam and I take the lid off and I use the saute function for 25 more minutes and let some of that water evaporate. And it is really, 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 really good. Wow. That's cool. Which, uh, do you have a particular pressure cooker you like? I use the instant pot, but I've used others before. I used to have, um, gosh, what is that? Uh, it's not a ninja. It's, um, what's the really popular brand that I thought, I thought instant pot was the most popular oh, brand. Yes, it is, but it's, it's their competitor. I forget. Um, which, there's which one. A, Melfi had one for a while. Melfi. I, um, I remember my husband's family got it for him for Hanukkah for, from Costco, maybe a ninja. I don't know. Uh, but it was an air pressure, no, sorry, air fryer and pressure cooker. Oh, that's top. cool. Maybe it was the Ninja, but it was the combination. Yeah. It's a combo. And that was really cool. And we're going to sa saute this in the water for, um, on, on about medium high for, um, we'll say three minutes for now. I'm going to start the bell pepper. It's going to take a little bit longer. And then I'm going to go over to the onion. I love onion and garlic very much. It provides so much flavor. It's the base of a lot of my recipes. You can forego if you don't like um, my neighbor, for example, she is allergic. So she does not eat them, but He's allergic to both onion and garlic? Yeah. Oh my God, that's gotta be, I, I don't know what he would eat. Uh, what about that spice hing or asafoetida or whatever that the the, the, um, the the religious sect use that can't have onion and garlic? I, I, I'm told that tastes a lot like oh, I've, I've never heard that there was a religious sect that hadn't, that couldn't or doesn't eat yep. onions and garlic. Do you know the reason? Because it's maybe too into what's the word? Not heat. It's in, it's too activating, or I, I I don't know. I'd have to Google it. It's been a while since I had somebody on talking about that. But but anyway, the, and, and again, like there's people that are on a low FODMAP diet that can't oh, yeah. eat it at least for a particular period of time. And so this spice hing, uh, Dr. Sunil Pai, who has a regular slot on my show, talks about there's just health benefits anyway to this spice hing, but it does taste like onion and garlic. Oh, interesting. I'll have to try that. I was just talking to someone earlier today about how moving toward, even, even when I wasn't fully vegetarian or, or vegan, incorporating more plants for me was different than I expected. I thought it was going to be restrictive. And instead what happened was I was open to a whole new world of flavors and textures. And it's been quite expansive for me in a way that I didn't know or realize was going to be. Was that what happened for you too, Chef AJ? What, what do you mean? For um, When people think, when, when people eat a standard American diet, they think 
oh my gosh, I'm going to have to give up oh, all no. the things I love. And instead, for me, it's been so eye-opening to the flavors and textures in the world that I didn't know of before because I was so limited in what I was eating and processed food. But having um, an open mind and trying new international cuisines, trying new different types of produce has been incredible. Yeah, I think you don't give up anything when you become plant-based. If anything, you expand your palate and your uh, diet because, I mean, we think about it, Tony, like meat, how many kinds are there? Chicken, fish, I mean, lamb, if you, you know, I mean, there's a few kinds of animals, but there's thousands of kinds of grains and legumes and, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables, potatoes even, you know? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I feel, I feel the same way. And I, I remember my first time ever going to a vegetarian restaurant. I was in high school and my friend who was vegetarian said, eat anything you want. I'll pay for it. My treat. And I was so intimidated for no reason that all I ordered was white rice. Little did I know that it would later become one of my favorite places to eat. It was Vietnamese food. I had never had Vietnamese food before. And I was just so stuck and the fact that it wasn't a hamburger that I didn't even want to try it. And I feel like that's what stops people from making healthy choices is the intimidation. But if you just have an open mind, it really broadens your horizon. It's an incredible experience. And I have way, way, way more and it loved by my palate now than ever before. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, so Apple, who's watching live, saying that the reason that sect, religious sect, doesn't eat it is because it's too stimulating. And Lydia says she just got your book and it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, for for people watching, I just put in the whole bell pepper and the whole onion right now. And next, I'm going to go into my garlic. I'm going to put in two cloves but you can put in as many as you'd like. I know that there are some serious garlic lovers out there who want five cloves. There's this popular meme. It always goes viral. It's when the recipe calls for one clove, you put in a whole head. And uh, and so if anyone's watching, you're welcome to do that too. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to do two. Actually, it looks like I have about three. So I'm going to do three and I've talked a little bit about how the recipe is very versatile. So play with your food. If you don't have fresh garlic, feel free to add in garlic powder as well. And you can mince it, you can chop it, but I think it adds a lot of flavor. Okay. And then I was going to say during the pandemic is when I was using a lot of the garlic that was already in the little jar, you know? Yep. Were you going to the, the grocery store very infrequently at that time? Pretty much. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, those were convenience items that I was using and it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not as flavor packed in my opinion. It has a slightly different flavor, but for people who are very, very, very strapped for time. It's a great alternative. And that was me for quite some time. I used to sing the praises, and I still do uh, sing the praises of jarred garlic. The big ones at Costco. Do you, do you promote in your book like bulk stores like that for people to save money? I Same promote Costco. I promote bulk for sure. And not only for big batches, but also for little batches. There was a time in my life where I didn't have a lot of money and I had a tiny little itty bitty kitchen and I used bulk very differently than I use, use it today. Now I buy a lot. So I'll buy 10 pounds of dried beans, 10 pounds of uh, brown rice, and I'm able to store that. But before... I would take my measuring cup and use a downpour at, we'll say, Winco or Sprouts and only fill up my measuring cup because that's what I needed in my meal plan for the week. So 
It's very uh, dependent on your space, your time, your budget, and either way, bulk is king. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit all together. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit higher to expedite the process. And it's pretty close to being finished. All we have to do now is add in the black beans, the corn, I'm gonna add in some lemon juice and some chili powder, and we're gonna serve them in these lettuce wraps. You can use butter lettuce. Today I'm using romaine, and it is such a simple meal. If you wanna make it an even fuller meal, you can serve it alongside some brown rice. And uh, I also have a cashew cream that is very tasty. You can see that's how I served it in the book, Plant-Based on a Budget, Quick and Easy. I served it with a little bit of cashew cream on top and it gives it uh, like a little bit of a sour flavor because I make my cashew cream with lemon juice. Elizabeth, who's watching live, wants to know, was it Edwards and Son, the bouillon that you were talking about? Yes. Yeah. Right. Thanks. That one's it. Thank you. I... Uh, okay, so while we wait for this, the next steps are so easy. I can tell you a little bit about my book. Here's yes, please. I'd love to know a little bit about you too, like how long you've been vegan, why, and uh, and all, any other books you've written. We'll start. We'll start there. That's a great. That's a great thing. Okay, so I'm I'm, I'm Tony. I've been running plant based on a budget for eleven years. It's hard to believe how time flies by so fast. Chef AJ, you probably as a creator feel the same way. Like you're so passionate that it doesn't feel like hard work. It feels, uh, of course it is hard work, but it doesn't feel like it's taking the energy away from you. It, for me, it feels like it revitalizes me and it keeps me motivated and passionate and inspired. And so I, I don't know where the time went, but 11 years has gone by. And when I first started, I, I was inspired to do so because my family was experiencing a lot of dietary health issues. My grandpa had died very unfortunately from complications in a triple bypass surgery. And he had had a heart attack before my aunt had multiple amputations and then died from type two diabetes. I had a 40 year old uncle who had a heart attack. I had family members with gout. It was all over the place. I lived in a primarily Mexican American community where type two diabetes was the norm. Everybody thought, oh, well, it's in our genes. That's how we, like, we just know that about ourselves, but really it was in their habits. And I wanted to show that you could eat healthy and you didn't have to rely on processed foods if you were on a tight budget, because that's what I heard all the time. So many people who were part of my community would think, oh, that's too expensive. I can't go to Whole Foods. I can't go to the natural foods co-op. But in reality, you can continue shopping at all the same places. My family loves Winco. My family loves Walmart. Those are perfect places. They have all of the ingredients for this meal and for a lot of the other ingredients in plant-based on a budget, quick and easy, and a lot of the recipes available online that are inexpensive, that are easy to find, don't require you to go outside of your comfort zone. And I wanted to highlight that. And as soon as I launched Plant-Based on a Budget, I realized there was such a demand for people who were cost conscious, who didn't have a lot of money to spend, or maybe they had money, but wanted to save up for a vacation for their family or to pay down their home loan or to get a new car or whatever it was, cost was on their mind. So I have spent so much of my life creating resources for plant-based on a budget. And um, before that, I had been vegan for um, four years, four years. So I've now been vegan, oh, five years. I've now been vegan for 16 years. And uh, it's like second nature to me. I still though, strive for continuous long-term 
progress. I want to always strive to be better and do the least amount of harm to my body, do the least amount of harm to the environment, to the animals. And so that is what inspires me. But I realize that it's not for me about perfection. And that has been what has kept me going for so long and has helped me stay very committed. I don't really beat myself up when I accidentally eat something that I didn't realize was whatever. Um, I just continue keep to keep choosing plant-based over and over and over and over. And I think about the longevity of it all. And, uh, and I, I feel really grateful to be part of this community for so long and to have had it become a crucial part of my life. And I hope that for this, for the people too. And there are people like Chef AJ who are creating communities. That's how I've stayed plant-based also. In the early days, especially, I didn't know anybody plant-based. My family was not very supportive. And having a community college vegetarian group that I could drop in at supported me and helped me learn how to cook. They brought me to a farm animal sanctuary that I ended up working at for years. And so finding your people, finding that support, watching shows like this, really keeps you uh oh frozen hmm and she's local is she frozen for you guys come back just so you know i'm doing one more show today it wasn't announced so um, hopefully you're subscribed because then you get the little notification. I'm hoping she'll come back because I can't finish her recipe. Oi, oi, oi. Is she frozen for you? Let's look up her phone number. Talk to me, guys, while we're trying to... Oh, she's gone. And maybe she'll be back. Now we know she's gone for sure. Oh, hi again. Yeah. Oh, good. I mean, not good that she froze for you, but I'm glad that it wasn't just me. And hopefully she'll come back. I will ask your question, Randy. I'm guessing the answer is no, but we will find out. Great question, by the way. If you guys missed the earlier show, Dr. Lyle was on fire. We only got to three questions, but boy, he really, he takes a wide, he takes the camera and he backs it up and he really unpacks them. That's why if you ever have a session with him, it's so productive. Oh, I sure hope she'll come back. Let me find her phone number. I won't say it out loud. Anyway, we apologize for any... She's local to me, guys. She's in. She's really close. I hope I get to meet her. I hope she'll come to a, a thing, like a meetup. All right. Okay, let me... Try her phone number. Maybe, I think she would know by now she's not here, right? Let's see. Hello. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself, which you are if you're watching live. Hey, you, you're gone. Do you know that? Yeah, you froze too. So you're trying to get on again. Well, I'm hang, I'm entertaining the troops. So keep trying, okay? Oh yeah, come back by your phone. That's fine. Okay, bye. So what do you guys want to talk about while we're waiting for her to reconnect? She's going to do her phone. Let's see if there's anything in the chat. I can tell you about my next class if you like. Uh, um, I, you have a nice comment, Karen. I'll wait till she comes back. What concert did I go to, Susan? Hi, Susan. Long time no see. How are you? I'm not. I'm not sick. Or I don't have COVID, but I have. I guess you would call it a cold, which I never got the three and a half years in the desert. So there is something to say for the hot weather. I don't think the germs can uh, land on you. But we went to. It wasn't really a concert. It was a. Um, it's called Hard Rock Live. We saw a comedian named Brian Reagan who my husband's family really likes. We went with my sister-in-law and a friend. And it, it was like, it was like being inside. You ever go to Costco 
where you get your produce and, you know, you have to like put a, a, a ski parka on. It's so cold in there. And the whole, you know, like three hours, I was just freezing and I had my coat on, but I didn't have a hat or a scarf. And I think that's, uh, I mean, the internet says you can't get sick from being exposed to cold, but it makes it a lot easier if you're, if you got a German were exposed or susceptible. So that's why I sound a little bit the way I sound, but uh, yeah, it was um, the, the opening comedian was amazing. I, somebody I'd never heard of. Charles, my guest isn't here. So <laughs> she, she went away accidentally. His name was Brian Whitehall. No, Brian, Brian. No, was it? What's his name? Was it Brian? Right. Gary Brightwell. And he was really funny. So we love comedy. I do comedy five nights a week. I'm in five classes a week and uh, hope to get good enough to be able to perform again someday in person. So We'll see. If you live in my area, my Tuesday class, you can take the first one for free. And I actually invited a chef named Angelique Miller. Uh, she hasn't been on the show, but she has a wonderful restaurant called Zest, and she's now in the class. So it's kind of fun doing comedy, if you like it. I think she's coming back. So we'll give her just a minute. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me? Can you see I me? I can hear you. I cannot see you yet, but I bet you'll be back in a minute. Let me just okay. ask you to start your video. Okay. okay. So I think you have to click something that says start. Yeah, it uh, looks like you're back. Am I the right way? Uh, no, you're sideways. <laughs> so you might have to turn your phone. You are the right way. You do have your orientation lock on, which means you're getting two black stripes. So I don't know if that's something you can correct on your iPhone or we'll just go with it. Okay, let's yeah, see. Yeah, good. Good. Oh, perfect. 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 Thank you. Yeah. So sorry about that. I don't know what happened. That is okay. Okay. So can you see me? I, I can't really see myself. Let's see. I can see you, Tony. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry for the disruption. I have my internet decided it doesn't want to work and I am now on my phone, uh, but I'm over here. I have poured in my can of beans. Uh, I've, I've started pouring it in. Here is the rest of it. And I'm also going to pour in my corn. This is just simply a corn kernel with no salt added. And I'm going to stir it in like so. And I'm gonna let it chill for a little bit. You can add in lime juice if you don't have lemon, but I'm gonna be adding in lemon juice. And that'll give it a nice, tangy flavor and I'm using one of these. I know there are a million kitchen gadgets and you don't need them all, but I use this all the time. I juice um, limes, lemons. I use it for citrus fruits if I'm making a sauce and it makes it very quick and easy. And it also ensures that you're using all of the juice out of the lemon which I appreciate. I'm always trying to get the most out of my produce. And this ensures I do that. Chef AJ, do you remember where I left off? I know I was talking. Oh about gosh, that. guys, if you remember exactly where she left off, make a comment. Um, I don't. It, well, you had the cover on though when, when when you last did it. You know, I think we spoke at a conference together. It was it in it. Were you in Atlanta or somewhere? Benji Kurtz, one of his conferences. Yeah, about a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. I don't think we met. We were different days, but I think we were at the same place at the same time. Awesome. I, uh, I really liked the event that I went to. It oh, was pretty. I hope he'll put his hat back in the ring because he was a top-notch producer. Okay, but let me tell you, there were some comments while you went away. I'm going to read them to you. Nice comments or questions. Just give me a second. Oh, somebody had a question. Randy had a question. Let me find it. It was about um, if you ever struggled with your weight or ever been overweight, she says you don't look like it. I have been um, plant-based for quite some time of my life. I was a runner and that was the original reason behind my transition into plant-based living. Uh, I used to eat lots of Taco Bell. I used to eat lots of hamburger helper, canned chili, frozen pasta meal. That was my jam. Uh, but I then met a coach who was concerned about how I was feeling sick all the time. I was really 
unwell. And I didn't consider how the food that I was putting into my body was impacting me. And so when he asked me, like, what are you eating? I thought, that's a weird question. Uh, And so he suggested that I cut back on the processed food. And I was only 16 at the time. So it was still early in my life. Uh, But he suggested that I cut back on processed food, cut back on the Taco Bell and stop eating so much red meat. So that was the very beginning. And at that time, my parents thought, what did we do to deserve this? Like, how could this happen to us? We have this kid who doesn't want to eat red meat. Little did they know that I would go on to not eat a lot more other things, but uh, they have since come around and become more supportive. And, uh, And so the answer to your question is, No, I started as a runner. I was an athlete and I did it to perform better. And I've been plant-based my whole adult life. So I have not struggled with my weight. Great. Thank you. And here is a comment from Karen that she just downloaded your three books from Bookshare. And thank you for putting your books into the Bookshare Bookshare format for the partially cited. Chef AJ, please do the same. Uh, I literally never heard of it, Karen, until just now. So I'm assuming I have to ask my publisher, right? Tony, do you know about Bookshare? I didn't, but my 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 publisher would be uh, delighted to know that it is in use. And I'll, I'll definitely let them know so that they continue doing that with future books. I didn't know about it. So right now I am emailing my publisher because I've never heard of it. So thanks for telling us about it. Nice. Let's see what else we got. You know, you mentioned to me before we logged on about how you're really seeing it uh, plant-based grow even in the area you've lived in. Yes, I am from Sacramento, born and raised. I was actually born in a little area outside of, of Sacramento called Woodland. It is about 30 minutes away, and I uh, have been living here as a vegan, as I mentioned, for 16 years, and in that time, so much has changed. There there have become more options. Uh, The culture understands it better. Before, nobody knew what vegan meant when you went to a restaurant, Uh, There weren't as many options available at regular grocery stores. And I would say it's in the past five years where it's really been amazing. And there's even something called the vegan, the Sacramento Vegan Chef Challenge, where every October, all of the chefs at the major restaurants compete against each other to have the best vegan menu. And people can go in and vote. And it's incredible to know that they are taking it more seriously that our city who prides itself on being foodies, um, we're the far, farm to fork capital of, our, of the area. Uh, we live in the Central Valley where it is um, so easy to find plant food that it's amazing for it to be celebrated in the way it currently is. And that has not always been the case, but there is uh, there are a lot of people And I'm glad to Chef AJ, you're part of this community now who are gathering people to celebrate plants and to learn how to incorporate them into everyday eating. And I feel like it's those communities that really set things off for an entire city like Sacramento. Did you go to the Sacramento Veg Fest this year? I did not. I was mentioning to Chef AJ that I am very extremely introverted. And so talking one-on-one is easy for me. Doing things online, that's also easy for me. But once you put me in a group, I shrink up and I get very small. So uh, I don't know if anyone else is an introvert, you'll have to drop it in the comments so I can go and read them and see who else are my introverted people. But I have always wished, I know some people who just they love going to big events. I enjoy them. I like to meet people one-on-one. I get it. Okay, so I've already washed my my lettuce leaves. I mentioned this earlier. Instead of using romaine, you can use the leaves of uh, butter leaves, of butter lettuce, or you can also use iceberg lettuce. That's sometimes cheaper. 
And uh, what I do is I just fill them. This is actually not a good one because you can see how many holes it is. So get one without holes, like this one. This one is just solid. And you'll fill it like a little taco boat. And I'm gonna let it cool. I'm turning off the heat now uh, so I can let it cool a bit so this doesn't get, like I want this to stay crispy. I don't want it to get soft by the heat. So I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit and then I'll serve it and show you what it looks like. And meanwhile, I'll tell you a little bit more about my cookbook. Um, my cookbook has been in my heart, in my mind, definitely for the past two years of active labor. But again, I've been working on plant based on a budget, helping people eat who are very extremely budget conscious for the past 11 years. And then I myself have been very hard up for money for lar lar large chunks of my life. So it is a culmination of all of my experience uh, and put into a book that is a comprehensive resource. And I worked with about a hundred recipe testers to make sure that the recipes tasted good outside of my kitchen. I left a lot of space for people to make these recipes their own. And so one of the things that I'm gonna show you right here is um, these are lines that say my tips. And I put those there because as a user of cookbooks, I write all over them. I put what I swapped in, what my family likes, what was cheaper at the grocery store, say I didn't have a particular seasoning, what else could I put in there? And I want people to have that same flexibility with my recipes. I want them to use them as a guide if they add something or subtract it or make it pretty differently. I think that that is so cool. And it, it warms my heart to know that I inspired a meal, even if it's not exactly it. I also wanted to quickly go back to the recipe and let you know that I'm going to stir in this chili powder right here. I recently went on to Amazon and found some jars for spices and for my pantry. Instead of having a lot of different things in different places, I organized them and it really enhanced my cooking experience because now I have a drawer that I stick all my spices in and all of the jars fit in the drawer instead of some jars are too big, so I have to stick them over here and some are too small, so I have to stick them over here. Uh, now they're all uniform and I just pull out my drawer. I can see all of them clearly and it makes me use them a lot more. I'm inspired just by seeing them thinking, ooh, a little bit of cumin would also be good in this and using chili powder, but cumin would be good, some smoked paprika would be good, a little bit of pepper would be good, some red chili flakes even. Uh, and just because I can see them very clearly in front of me, I get inspired to use them more. Any tips on buying spices in bulk to make that more affordable? Yes. And if you have a store that has bulk spices, uh, Sprout definitely does. Winco definitely does. You can buy only what you need or you can buy in large quantities. And both of them save you so much money and are better for the environment because you're not using so many jars um, and most of them are plastic. Now I'm using glass jars. So I bring my own little reusable bags to Winco, we'll say, and then I fill them up, bring them home and put them in my glass jar and no plastic is used throughout that experience, which is a goal of mine. It is very hard to not, to try not to use a lot of plastic, especially at the grocery store. You know, it's interesting is because whole, whole Foods sometimes gets a real bad rap of being called, you know, whole paycheck, but you can get some really great uh, affordable deals there, you know? Yes. And what I like to, how I've been thinking about it a lot, people have been really concerned about food prices. Um, we're in a recession, food prices have also gone up and it's on everyone's mind. And when I go to the grocery store and I'm studying prices, what I see is that animal products are very expensive and some 
process products are very expensive. But if you're looking for things that you would find in the bulk bin, like your brown rice and your quinoa and your lentils, uh, those have not gone up very much in price. And if they have, it's 10 cents, 15 cents per pound. So it's still very economical. They're foods that people have been thriving on for centuries, and they're major staples in the Play Based on a Budget Quick and Easy cookbook. I also feel like tofu is something that people have not really embraced as uh, as thoroughly as I would like them to have, especially my parents, the meat-loving parents that I have. I want them to eat more tofu. And uh, with eggs being so high in cost right now, I, I went to a grocery store and there was $7 for a dozen eggs. Tofu is such a great replacement for that. You can use uh, silken tofu in baking instead of eggs. You can use extra firm or super firm tofu in something like a savory breakfast dish, like a scramble, tofu scramble. And it's, it's incredible. I am curious, do we have anyone who does not like tofu? Because that was once me. I used to not like tofu. So if you didn't, if you don't like tofu, let's talk and I'll help you learn the ways of tofu in the way that I learned to embrace tofu as well. Nice. A lot of people answered about your uh, introvert question. And we have live a very talented raw chef named Raw Chef Yin. And she's saying, I'm an introvert unless I have my chef's jacket on. And then I feel it gives me the superpower to talk to big crowds. Oh, I love that. I love that. I actually, uh, I used to be more comfortable giving talks, but I think because I'm out of practice, I cannot do it anymore. I get so sick, sick to my stomach that I just don't do it as much. So maybe I should put on an apron or something like that to really get in the headspace that I'm going to be cooking and that I really actually love it. Uh, I think that that's super smart. Maybe I'll do some superhero power poses so that I can feel that confidence as well. Okay, so I am going to um, give you a couple other suggestions and things you can do. I already poured the lemon juice in there. You could, as I mentioned, add in things like um, spinach, Bell, other other bell peppers, you can do mushroom, zucchini. Uh, the options are endless for this. You can also put in some herbs. Some cilantro would be really nice. You could even do a parsley and um, you can change the spices that you're using. I'm going more of a Southwest inspired uh, flavoring, but you could change it up and have an entirely different experience using different spices. Uh, so I'm gonna put them in these little lettuce leaves and show you how pretty it is. The people that are saying they don't do soy, it's usually because of some kind of allergy or intolerance, not because they don't okay. like it. I see. Okay. So I'm going to put in a couple, and I think I mentioned this earlier, but you can do a few different things with these once you have them. You can eat them on their own. You can put some salsa. You can chop up some avocado slices or some uh, cherry tomatoes and top them off. You can put a, a cashew cream on top. You can also make it more full with some quinoa or brown rice. Those are the ways I like to serve it. And it's usual, usually a real crowd, crowd pleaser because of all of the beautiful colors and how filling it is. So eh, this is what it's looking like. I don't know if you can see that. It's, I'm very little for mine, but it, it's very delicious. It's pretty to look at and it's filling. And uh, I can eat probably two to three of these to get feeling like I'm satiated. That's the funnest thing is you can actually be full uh, on a plant-based diet at a lower price point. Absolutely, absolutely. And this whole meal 
cost me about five dollars and i would say i have four to six servings so four to six servings uh and and i'll call two tacos a serving cheaper than the drive-through absolutely whoever says the dollar menu is cheaper is that we need to talk because um it's not, I'm it's not cheaper because you're going to need diabetes medicine and stents and all those kind of things so it may seem well, cheaper at the beginning, but it's not. And even then it's not because I'm showing you that you can feed six people in your family for five bucks. Uh, whereas at the dollar menu, you can't do that. Nope. <laughs> I'm happy to answer any questions before sure. we are. Let me uh, check, check the chat. Check the chat. You guys got any questions for Tony? Oh, uh, 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 Char Charlene says her book just arrived. Wonderful. Where do people find you the most? It seems like, is Instagram your most uh, favorite place to hang out with people? Yes. If anyone has any questions, they can reach me at Plant Based on a Budget. I am very active there. I check my DMs obsessively. So feel free to reach out there. And, uh, and then... I would say the second place is probably Facebook. I, I do like Facebook a lot. All right. What, how many books have you written so far? And what are they? Uh, I have written, this is my fourth book. This is my fourth book based on a budget, quick and easy. I actually have them right here. This is my first book. I wrote that book um, not because it was my idea. A publisher came to me with the idea and I got paid a writer's fee to write the book. It was very, very extremely modest. Uh, and I put in a lot of work, but at the time I was pretty desperate for money and I'm grateful for the opportunity, even though when I look back on it, I it's hard to believe I would want to ever do that again. Um, then I went on to write Plant Based on a Budget, which is the original book to this. This one's a follow-up. And I mentioned a little bit about this earlier, but this book was written at a time where I wanted to teach people how to cook from scratch, everything from scratch, because that is going to be the most economical and with this book, I wanted to make sure that time was also considered in a way that I didn't as much in Plant Based on a Budget. And then the Friendly Vegan Cookbook, I co-authored with my friend, Michelle, who also lives in Sacramento. Her handle is at vegan and she is a great content creator. And she uh, and I have been very dear friends. We wanted to collaborate on a, on a project. So we co-authored that one. And it came out at pretty much the worst possible time to come out with a cookbook. It was in 2020. It came out the week before the election and it was totally overshadowed in many ways because we were in a pandemic. There were a lot of um, social issues going on in the media and then there was the election. And so people did not want to talk about cookbooks at that time. So we put in a lot of work, but it did not perform as we had hoped, which is totally fine. You win some and you lose some. Well, your new book is number one in vegan cooking on Amazon right now. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me today. It's my pleasure. pleasure. Well, Robert Cheek connected us. He's got a regular slot on my show. And he said, have you had Tony on? And I'm like, nope. And then here you are, a neighbor practically. He is so nice. He is such a nice person. You know what I call him? I call him the Mr. Rogers of vegan. Oh my gosh. You are not lying about that. He is incredibly nice. And uh, I'm grateful to be connected because you are going to help me get out of my shell and become more active in my community. I'm going to take you, I'm going to hold your hand at the next meeting if you join. I mean, I literally, I'll be like your, what are they, I'll be like your bodyguard. You know? Oh yeah, my, my wing person. I, we're going to be, uh, I will definitely be holding your hand. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. My whole family, they love hanging out with people. And I got all of the genes that would have gone to them are all in me. That's funny. 
Well, you know, yeah, 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 are who you are. So Michelle, who's watching live, who's been on the show, did a wonderful job, says, now that your new book is out, what's next, Tony? I love your work. Oh, thank you. I want to take a nap. Uh, I have about a week. I've, until Saturday, I'm really going hard to promote the book. And then after that, I'll probably take a long siesta and rest and then regroup next month. But right now and for the past few months, my book has been the priority. And I am so proud of how it has turned out. I'm really excited about it. And I'm glad that I'm in a position to prioritize this book. Nice. And Hannah saying, for those that can't tolerate soy, any ideas what we could substitute? Um, I This is a little bit more expensive, but I was just on an, on an Instagram live and someone was talking about pumpkin tofu. Have yeah, you heard tofu. of pumpkin tofu? Pumpkin tofu. tofu. Yeah, interesting. Pumpkin and tofu, yep. Uh, and I thought that that was really interesting. They were actually saying something similar along the lines that they don't do tofu, but that's a good alternative if you want that similar texture, but there are a lot of other protein sources. My favorite that I use the most often is beans. I love beans. And if you look at the research, beans have been a staple of some of the longest, healthiest living communities and, uh, they're affordable and easy to make and delicious, versatile. Yep. And, and, and all the legumes are really affordable lentils too. Absolutely. I love lentils. I am newer to lentils than beans. I uh, I grew up in a Mexican American home. And so I, I'm very familiar with beans, but lentils, not so much. We didn't eat a lot of lentils. And it was something that I learned to cook as an adult and have really come to rely upon. And uh, I'm even newer to red lentils. I started with green lentils, but red lentils cook so quickly. I am a big fan. Do you ever like like shop sales, shop seasonally? What other kind of advice to to make things more affordable? I do both. Uh, There are a few things that I do. Back when I was younger, my mom would go to the store and totally embarrass me. She would come with her big accordion folder of coupons. And I am so grateful that you can be much more discreet these days. And instead of having them all clipped, you can uh, simply clip them on, clip them digitally on a barcode on your phone. And so when you go to the grocery store, like Sprouts, for example, you can simply scan your barcode and you'll be good to go. And uh, so I saved that way. And what's super cool about that was when I was growing up, it was a lot of processed food that had coupons attached to them. But now if I go to Sprout, you can sometimes get 25 25 cents off if you get three avocados or 25 cents off if you get five bananas. And these are things that I'm going to use anyway and that are good for me. And I get to save money on top of them. So I try to check the coupons. There are awesome rebate apps. Knowing when your store's sales are, like on at Sprout, uh, there's a double uh, double ad Wednesday where you get last week's sales and this week's sales. Plus you can use your coupon. So it is uh, a great deal on that. Then of course, shopping in bulk, uh, having a meal plan, using what you have already to build that meal plan, assessing what's in your pantry and in your freezer. And uh, then really finding that discipline to not make those impulsive purchases when you are shopping and and getting distracted when you're at the grocery store. Yeah. Here's a good question from Michelle. How do we eat cheap while we're eating organic? I, uh, I feel like for my audience, uh, it is a very, very serious issue where people are just getting introduced to produce uh, and it's as much of an abundance as I hope for them. And when I'm talking to people who are on a very tight budget and they're concerned about stretching their dollar, I say go for the produce, even if it's not organic. But if you're in a position to purchase organic and you can, that's awesome too. 
Right. Well, you know, like that, you know, that list, the clean 15 and the dirty dozen by ewg.org. That's a good one, don't you think? Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Because I mean, like, for example, like a banana, I mean, I guess you could eat a banana peel, there's recipes, but most people don't. And it's, they feel it's less important that it be organic. But you know, I did an interview with Dr. Ron Weiss, who has a regular slot on this show, but I think it was for a summit, it wasn't for, it's not on YouTube, but he he's a farmer and a doctor. And he talked about how even organic isn't as great as you think, you know, they're still chemicals, it's just they're different mm -hmm. ones, and they're approved ones. And, and sometimes you're just better off by, by buying from a small local farmer, even if he didn't get that expensive certification. Absolutely. And also, it depends on where you live. Uh, Chef AJ and I are very lucky to live in a place where it's easy to grow food and an inexpensive to grow food. Uh, and in the summer here, I grow a lot of what we eat. And that's a way for me to ensure that it has uh, been treated the way I want it to be treated and that the impact on the environment is the way I want it to be. I know that's not for everybody, but before I lived in a place with a yard, I lived in tiny apartments and I lived in places with hardly any space for growing food. And I was still able to have herbs on my windowsill or a planter on my balcony or something on my front porch that got a little bit of sunlight. Uh, so you can start, start with what you're able to grow, whether that's a pot of basil or a whole bed of produce in your backyard. And it'll save you money in the long run, uh, especially if you can plant a tree. I'm all about planting trees right now. I'm a little bit obsessed. Um, it's about 30 to $40 to plant a tree. And that seems like an uh, upfront investment, but every year I'm getting hundreds of pieces of fruit. Uh, and that would cost me quite a bit of money if I did not do it through um, growing it myself. Nice. I just have any more questions. Yeah, I mean, even Dr. Greger talks about it at nutritionfacts.org that it's always better to eat an inorganic piece of produce than, a, than a, you know, an organic piece of animal product or processed food. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I love that. And I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. I, Karen, I don't have control over other people's things like forks over knives, you know, so if you need those, these things in Bookshare, I really recommend you contact them because I mean, even if I ask them, they're not necessarily going to do it. I think it helps to hear from the person that wants that done. But as far as the pleasure trap, it's the same publisher. It's mine. So I'll, I'll definitely tell him that. And, he, and Dr. McDougall also has a book with that publisher. Uh, Randy wants to know, do you use frozen fruits and vegetables? I do. And I like to keep them stocked in my in my freezer because when life gets busy or say I get back from a trip, a work trip or a vacation, and I haven't had a chance to go grocery shopping, I still have these staples that are available to me that will uh, provide the produce in my meal. So things I usually have on hand, I have tons of onions, those keep for a long time. I like to keep uh, carrots, and I store those and water in my refrigerator. Uh, in my freezer, I like broccoli. I like mixed vegetables. Um, I have a carrot and, and peas mixed and some um, bell peppers mixed. And those I just keep there in case I need them or if I'm feeling really tired and I don't want to cut the frozen, sorry, the fresh produce. And then another thing about it that's pretty cool that not a lot of people know is that Dollar Tree of all places has frozen produce available both in berries and in mixed vegetables. So if that is what you have nearby your home and that's just what's available, uh, check them out too. You'll be surprised at the unassuming places like Winco, like um, Dollar Tree that have plant-based options available. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's amazing. If you look like in the 99 cent store, they have so much there and a lot of it really is organic. Yeah, it's it's incredible. They even have um soy milk, they have at Dollar Tree, they have brown rice, they have uh, whole beans, they have 
tomato sauce. They have a lot of different things that are really basic pantry staples that you can whip together a nice meal. It is so true. Let's see if you guys have any more questions for Tony. Oh, um, wait, I thought I saw one. Um, do you teach any cooking classes? I don't teach any cooking classes, but I have a ton of videos if you are interested on Instagram that are mini real tutorials with the ingredients listed below. Right. And uh, Apple is mentioning how all farmers, not all farmers can afford organic certification, yet they may very well be organic. And I just saw a comment. Oh, from... Um, Looks like Heather, the recipes in your new cookbook, do they have oil like in your first cookbook? They do. And there are optional uh, swaps. So I have, um, if you don't eat oil, this is how you make the swap. And um, I usually give the measurements of how I did this today. I used water and or uh, vegetable broth. Nice. Thank you. Well, oil's not cheap though, really, Tony, when you think about it. That is true. It is true. I, I will say that of my audience, 65% of people I surveyed eat animal products. They, they are meat lovers, likely had McDonald's for lunch, uh, and they're looking to incorporate more plants into their diet. And I'm often the very first step into incorporating more plants, not even being plant-based. And so I feel like I'm the bridge uh, and get people dipping their toe into eating more plants. And then I recommend them to a lot of fantastic organizations like Nutrition Facts, like um, Forks Over Knives, who will then continue on the path. Nice. Let's see. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, especially good quality olive oil, that is expensive. Very much so. All right. Well, I hope to see you at a meetup very, very soon. Oh, question. Will Tony be posting on YouTube again? Oh, that's a good question. I am very inspired uh, by YouTubers. So I want to be a YouTuber. It is my goal. Maybe after I'm done with this book, book launch, I will get back into it. It's so fun uh, to have more long form content. So thank you for asking because it'll inspire me. Are you doing any in-person book signings like at the local Barnes and Noble? I did one when I first moved here. It was really fun because such a supportive community up here. I, I had a very great turnout um, on Sunday here, but I did them this past week. So wait, wait, um, wait, you went to the Barnes and Noble here? I wasn't at Barnes and Noble. I was at a, an independent bookstore called A Seat at the Table, which is located in Elk Grove. And that's a little bit south of Sacramento, about probably 10, 10, 15 minutes. Wow. Uh, and it was it was a really fun experience. Um, I got to see a lot of uh, awesome vegans and it was co-sponsored by the Sacramento Vegetarian Society. So a lot of... Uh, veg people came, which was really cool. Very cool. Well, we could do a meetup too with my group if you want and sell some books. Our Ooh, next one is uh, March 22nd and then uh, uh, April 30th if you want to come. We awesome. Thank you. you. Nice. What's the most popular recipe either in your book or that you ever created? My most popular recipe hands down is a bean salad. And I have posted it many times and almost every time it goes mega viral. And it's basically a mixture of different types of beans. It actually looks very similar to this, but it's not cooked, it's raw. And it has um, fresh tomatoes that you can put in avocado if that's within your budget. You then put in some lemon juice and some cilantro and it so good. But I think what people really like about it is how fresh it is and how colorful it is and how it uses familiar ingredients and taste that you can take it to anybody's house as a potluck offering and they'll love it too. 
Nice. That's so cool. And that's so interesting about your audience that they uh, resonate with you if they're not even yet plant-based. That's very inspiring and encouraging. Thank you. It's been uh, it's been a, a really fun experience. I came from working in the vegan advocacy world. That's where I'd spent the first part of my adult life. And um, working with vegan people is very fun, but also sometimes they are far more critical of, of other vegan people. And so going into a place where people are very new and genuinely interested in learning more and want to take control of their health for the first time ever and are learning what I got to learn was that what we eat impacts us and, and fueling ourselves with plant foods is going to benefit us long term uh, is so cool. And I'm so grateful that I get to be along that journey with so many. You mentioned you worked at an, an animal place in Grass Valley or a rescue. Tell me about it. I didn't know there was one up here. There's a place called, there's a sanctuary called Animal Place, and it is a very large farm animal sanctuary that I don't know if they're open to the public right now, but pre-pandemic, they offered tours and um, they have cows and chickens and pigs that have been rescued from slaughter and have been given an opportunity to live out a happy, free life. And it's really cool. I, I feel like as a person, I healed a lot through watching animals heal. And uh, it's incredibly inspiring to see animals for the first time become confident and have the space and freedom to be individuals. And I, if, if anybody has an opportunity to visit a farm animal sanctuary, it's very worthwhile. And it's called Animal Place in Grass Valley. Animal Place in Grass Valley, yes. I'm, I'm going to Google it. Maybe they'll want to be on the show. I had no idea. See, I always yeah. want to come on this show. Amazing. All right. Well, Tony, this is great. I wish you every success with your book. It's already off to a great start at number one. And guys, I have the link both in the chat and the show notes if you'd like to grab it. And we love to see vegan books do well because it just helps everybody. Jeff AJ, thank you so much for all the good work you do in the world, helping people take control of their health and stay inspired. I admire you and I'm grateful to be on your show. Oh my God. Well, thank you. It's, it's just, I don't know why it took us so long to connect, but I guess you were just waiting for me to move near you. <laughs> exactly. We need to be neighbors. Thank all you. Right. Thanks so much, Tony. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in just a few minutes when my guest is Lissa Maris of Raw Food Romance.